Hello everyone and thank you for visiting. Today I'm going to talk with you about decimal numbers and these are including tenths and hundredths. Now we can't get into decimal numbers until I first very briefly remind you of the place value of what we already know. This is a ones cube. It represents one. This is a ten stick. It's also called a rod or a long and that represents ten. And this is a hundred flat or just a hundred and that represents one hundred. Now today we're specifically going to talk about one and how we can break one apart into smaller parts. So here is one unit. This is one dollar represented like this. And this is just one whole square. Now we're going to take each of these and we're going to break them up into parts using decimals and fractions. Here's the one that I was talking with you about earlier. This is also called a unit. Now this is one whole square. It's not broken up into any parts. Imagine kind of like one whole cake, one whole brownie pan. Now here is one whole square, but this one is actually split up into 10 equal pieces. And we represent that as tenths. That's why we talk about the tenths place. And it is also represented in fractions with the denominator of 10. This square is one whole square, but it is split up into 100 equal pieces. That's why it's called hundredths. And in fractions, the denominator is 100, 100 equal parts. So now the place value that we're, all, we're going to be using as we discuss tenths and hundredths is here. This is the tenths place. This is the hundredths place. And here, separating the ones place and the tenths place is our decimal. We don't call it a dot or a point. It is a decimal. So let's put our decimal numbers in actions. Here you have a decimal grid. It has 100 equal pieces. I have a penny, which represents one out of 100 cents of a dollar. So I'm going to represent this penny on the grid. This is worth only one cent. So I will color in only one part here. Try and get it thick enough there. So we'll say that that's one one hundredth of a dollar. And if I'm going to represent that on my place value chart, I have one hundredth, zero tenths, and zero ones. And this is how I represent that number, one hundredth. If I represent it as a fraction, I would put one out of one hundred is what a penny is equal to. That's hundredths. Now let's look at a dime. Now a dime is special because a dime fits into a dollar 10 times, but I can also represent it on the hundreds grid over here as um, 10 hundredths. So let's go ahead and shade in what we know. One dime is actually one tenth of a dollar. And if I shaded in one tenth, I would shade it just like this. Not quite so neat, but you get the idea. And my fraction is one tenth of a dollar. I write it in my place value chart as one tenth. I have zero ones and there is my decimal. That's how I write one tenth. Now, if I were to take this same dime and put it in this grid, I would shade 10 parts because a dime is actually 10 pennies. That'll be good enough. And I'm going to put this as 10 out of 100. And if I were to write that on the place value chart, it's pretty much the same. I can have zero ones, my decimal, and 10 out of 100. So as you can see on this one, I have a zero in the hundredths place. In this one, I have no zeros or anything in the hundredths place. It's just one tenth, but these are actually equivalent. They equal the same thing. All right, so let's look at some actual decimal grids that have been shaded. So look at your decimal grid here. As you can see, this grid has part of it shaded. It's not one whole, but it's part. 
So I know that in my ones place, I'm going to have a zero because there is not one whole shaded and there is my decimal. So when I tell my students to count, I say, go ahead and count the columns. It's easier to count that way. So this is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And now we'll count the ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I know that my number is actually 57 hundredths. And I can write that as a fraction like this. 57 out of 100 is shaded. Here's another grid for you to practice. This one has less shaded than the one we talked about before. Let's go ahead and count the columns. I see 10, 20, and this one looks like 28 is shaded. So I'm gonna write that number like this. I have zero ones. Here's my decimal and 28 hundredths is shaded. Here's how I write the number in words. When I represent the number with digits, it's written in standard form and I can't forget my fraction. 28 out of 100 is what is shaded. And here's a blank decimal grid. You'll see these a lot. Now I want you to shade in the decimal grid or think about how you'd shade it in if you were to shade 45 hundredths. Well, I'm gonna tell you the same thing I said before, shade the columns first. I know that I'm gonna have four columns shaded and then five ones shaded to represent 45. So when you shade all of that in, it's not the whole decimal grid, but it is part of it. And you see this represents 45 hundredths. Now, if I were to shade uh, represent this as a fraction, I would write it like this, 45 out of 100 is the same as 45 hundredths. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial on decimal numbers going up to the tenths and hundredths place. If you'd like to see more videos in the future, please like and subscribe to my channel. Have a wonderful day.